Hey, good morning. Uh, we're on uh, part two of our Holy Week Seder series. And uh, so this morning, I really want to focus on a couple things with you. And uh, we're going to go through this together. So if you have your Haggadah, the, the telling or the retelling uh, booklet, uh, grab it, bring it out. We're going to kind of take a look, if you will, at the Seder plate. This would be page two. And you're going to notice that in a moment. You can continue to use all of it. Um, but I want you to take a look with me, if you will, at the Seder plate. And notice on the screen, I also put where you can find it in your your uh, Haggadah, okay? And you'll notice this the Seder plate here, all, all of this right in here. What's really neat um, about this as you're going through it is uh, each of these food items represents something to the Jews as they're sitting down to have it. And so... Um, because our whole Seder um, meal is kind of this week in particular with the quarantine and that, I, I want you to be able to have some object lessons, if you will. So I'm going to focus on certain things about it instead of doing a normal Seder meal. So today, I really want you to take a look and, and focus on uh, the parsley and the salt water. So typically, we think of parsley as a garnish for our plates, and uh, we see at the restaurants and wherever you go out to eat many times, we'll just kind of lay a, a sprig of uh, parsley on top of whatever we're eating to the side of it. Um, this isn't the case specifically with a, a Seder meal or with the Jews as they're taking this. Every little bit of this has um, a meaning and something that is applicable to their lives. And so we want to focus in on that um, today specifically as well. So with that, I want you to realize that the parsley actually is quite bitter when you just eat it all by itself. And that bitterness is to remind the Israelites of the bitterness of 400 years of slavery. Not just the 400 years, but um, all the, the pain and sorrow, everything that they struggled with um, over the time that they were in bondage uh, in Egypt. For a disciple of Jesus Christ, though, it should remind us of the bitterness and the sorrow, some of the suffering that we experience because of the sin that uh, we committed in our lives and experienced from other people in our lives as well. So the Haggadah, um, as we're going through this, I want you to realize that not just the parsley, but the salt water, is um, it's a taste to remind that sweat of hard labor. Um, all that uh, work that they did for Egypt uh, that went for somebody else that they never got any real pay for or, or got any um, profit from. It's a, a very real reminder in the dipping in the taste, the tears that they shed for the pain and the sorrow of all those years in slavery and bondage to Egypt as well. So this is where we want to go today with this experience as we're going through this great teaching opportunity. And so this is a family experience for the young and the old alike. So everybody gets to participate in this. So if you get a chance to and they have it, and I, I pray that they will, uh, go to the store and get a, a bunch of parsley. They usually sell it for 3 or $4, probably a little less. Uh, and it comes in a bunch. So grab it. Um, get a warm a glass of water, maybe about six ounces is really all you'll need for everybody around the table. And uh, fill it and do this together as a family as well. Um, fill it with two to three tablespoons of um, salt. Make sure that as you're dipping your finger in it, um, that you, when you taste it, it kind of makes you uh, want to pull away a little bit because of the saltiness in it. Uh, it's probably going to have more salt than you would even in the ocean. Um, so I, I want it to be real salty, but not so much that the salt collects on the bottom of the glass. Stir it up. Uh, that's why you want to use some warm water and uh, get it all so that it dissolves in it. Okay. Then as you're sitting around the table, I want you to break off a sprig for each person that is around the table with you. Uh, so just enough that they can dip that in. Okay. Then, then they're going to eat. So you want to kind of keep that glass of salt water right in the middle of um, of your table and where you all are and or that you can pass it around and you break off that sprig you give it to everybody and then they dip it in there and then you eat it okay so you want to do that together <laughs> pay attention as you're doing this to folks um, you know faces especially with the kids I mean kids just don't lie so let them be able to share what what's going on in their mouths develop a conversation here 
And then I want you to kind of, uh, whoever's kind of leading this process, I want you to, to begin to, to uh, lead this conversation in a particular direction. And so um, I've given you some thoughts here. Tell of a time you worked so hard, uh, you were dripping with sweat and your mouth felt like cotton. It was so dry. And just give everybody around the table an opportunity to share. Um, not everybody has to, but make sure that they're participating in this conversation. And they're, you, as the, the leader of it, are seeing who is kind of just, just there and who isn't. And try to get everybody involved so that, that uh, you can learn from this experience together. The second uh, part of the conversation, you want to drive them to the issue of tell of a time when uh, where you were hurt by someone so badly you just cried. Um, you don't have to share specific details about each and every little thing that went on in that event, but just in, in general, like, you know, I, I was at school once and one of the kids um, at, at the playground came up and, and um, just pushed me off the swing because they wanted to swing it and it hurt and I, I was crying. Something simple, um, but also enough so that uh, you, you get why you were hurting and and uh, that somebody did something to you or you may have done something to somebody else and it caused hurt and pain and and you really felt awful about it and began to cry because of it. Then I want you to break out your Bibles and just read Psalm 32. What an incredible uh, psalm to be able to read about what God does with our sin and how he gives us joy. And I, I want you to, as you're sitting there, I want you to explain how sin has destroyed all that God has created. And that God's provided a way through Jesus Christ for our sin to be taken away. And, and this is important. It's not just that Jesus will forgive. I think too often we just stop right there and we say, Jesus, you know, if you tell Jesus what you've done wrong, he'll forgive you. But, but tell how all of sin has destroyed the way we think, the way we do things. It's destroyed creation and the trees and the flowers. Even though we see things beautiful right now, God created it even more incredibly beautiful um, and sin has just destroyed it and we don't even really understand how much sin has destroyed everything share how jesus forgives all the sin that um, we we've done and will help us take care of it as we walk in a loving relationship with him forever remember we're building on the story that we already shared earlier this week um, about how our lives have been different because jesus has entered our lives and we have a relationship with him, a loving, obedient relationship with him till we get to heaven where we'll spend eternity with him. So begin to share a little bit more about that and spend some time with your family as you talk back and forth about some of this. Then I want you to remind your family that um, working hard and working harder, sweating and doing all these things, these good things that we think are, are important. And if you had a scale, you know, um, I don't want to, one of the old scales that has two sides to it, um, you might want to put some of that and just help them realize that doing good stuff for God doesn't mean that God's going to forgive me just because I did this stuff, that only Jesus can forgive. And that's where you should read Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, where it says it's by grace you have been saved, not by any work, um, lest any man should boast. It's a gift of God. It's, it's through Jesus Christ. He's the only one who can save us. And then share with your family that everyone sins and thinks, does, says things that hurt other people and more importantly, have hurt God because we haven't done um, the things that he's asked us to do, the things that he's commanded us to do. That's all sin. Romans 3.23 tells us, for all have fallen short of God's glory and we all deserve to die because of sin. That's 6.23. But read Romans 3.23, because I, I really believe that um, for children, and, and I'm sorry to say it, but many adults as well, that we think um, we, haven't, we haven't killed anybody. You know, we've, we've taken good care of our family and left them uh, an inheritance so that they can keep going on. Uh, there's a lot of folks who really don't believe that they've done anything that merits um, needing forgiveness or needing salvation from our sin. And that's where Romans 3.23 is a great opportunity to share that there's nobody. There's nobody in all of, of the earth who has ever lived that hasn't done things that are wrong, that haven't hurt God or other people. And that's sin. And we're all guilty of it. We all need a Savior. The parsley and the salt water should remind us 
that um, just like the Israelites needed a savior to save them from Egypt and the bondage of their slavery, we need a savior to save us from the bondage and slavery of our sin. And Jesus is the only one who can save us from that sin and that bondage. If we tell Jesus our sins, he will keep his word and he will forgive us. Read 1 John 1.9. We won't have to work and sweat trying to get rid of our sin anymore. We don't have to try and do more good things than we do bad things in order to overwhelm our sin debt. And we won't have to cry over our sins and hurt. We don't have to, to feel so bad and guilty and, and everything of like that anymore because Jesus will forgive us. And when he forgives us, all of that goes away and, and joy and forgiveness fill our hearts. We can ask Jesus to save us from our sin and forgive us and be our Savior. That's um, Romans chapter 10, verses 9 to 13. I, I encourage you to read that as well. And then just take some time and talk about that as a family, young and old together. Um, just begin to share what, what you believe about that, who Jesus is, and, and have that conversation. You don't have to get overwhelmed. You don't have to feel like you have to teach something here. This is the experience that you're coming together. This is what the Seder represents for us as believers in Christ going forward now. The reality is it opens the door for a spiritual conversation to be had. And those that really um, are desiring to walk with Jesus and have a relationship with him, to grow in love and to grow in obedience with him, will continue to respond. And those that are still searching are going to need more answers. And this opens that door for the conversation to be had for you to start giving some more of those answers. When everything is done, just kind of finish with a simple prayer. And maybe even as you're doing it, you want to ask, you know, is there anybody here right now that realizes that they can't get rid of their sin and Jesus is the only one who can? And so maybe you want to um, help them be able to ask Jesus to forgive them and be their Savior. It's a great opportunity. Listen, more people um, share year after year after year that the only reason they haven't asked Jesus to be their Savior or to forgive them of their sins up to that point is because nobody shared with them how or nobody asked. Here's a great opportunity for you. Ask. Ask right there. Do you want to? And then just share what you did when you asked Jesus to be your Savior. Don't make it difficult because you know what? God knows when somebody is really asking them to forgive and be your savior. So here's, here's where we finish up this morning. Um, just really use this opportunity to build your family, to start a conversation about where this can go, and remind yourselves that the bitterness of sin, um, the saltiness of your tears is something that only Jesus can take away because he removes all sin. He removes the bonds and the slavery of sin that it has caused in our lives. Just as he did with the Israelites so many years ago, he can do it for us now, and we can be free from that. So take this time. Enjoy as a family. Spend it. It's not going to take a ton of time. It, all of this will take maybe a half an hour, and, and trust me, this will be one of the greatest half-hour memories that you could possibly build together. God bless you now, and look for tomorrow's as well.